Nothing changes instantaneously. In a gradually heating bathtub, you'd be boiled to death before you knew it. Our Father, who art in heaven. Seriously? What the actual fuck? Gilead doesn't care about children. Gilead cares about power. Why does healing have to be the only goal? Why can't we be as furious as we feel? For whatever man sows, so shall he reap. Welcome to Above the Garage. Hi, friends. Today is such an exciting interview. We had Nina Carey generously come chat with us for quite a while. Obviously, she plays Alma, and Alma is one of our favorite characters. So this was an amazing experience. We hope you enjoyed as much as we did. Hi. Hey. Hi. How are you? Good. How are good. you? I'm good. So what are all of your names? So I'm Kate. Hello. I live in Philly. Okay, cool. I'm Kimberly. I live in Australia. <laughs> Hello. Perth. Perth, to be exact. Uh, yes. Perth, Australia. Amazing. And then I'm Violet, and I live in South Carolina. Cool. It's really nice to meet you all. Yeah, you too. It's really nice to meet you. We love you. The show appreciates all of you for like having such nice, in-depth um, appreciation of the show. So That is very kind of you to say. Are you in LA right now? Or are you are you based in Canada? I'm based in Canada. I I'm in LA right now. Um, I kind of am flirting with both. So I'm like sometimes in Canada, sometimes here. Um, it's just the classic actor thing. Uh, wherever you're working or whatever. But I'm currently in LA. Okay, cool. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Vancouver, in Canada. Oh, awesome. I read that you came to Canada from Serbia. I did. Yeah. How old were you when you went to Canada? So I was one. Um, so I basically like grew up in Canada, but we spent every summer in Serbia since I was like, really, oh, cool. except for like the summers where the war was so insane that you like can't send your children there. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise we went all the time. So you speak Serbian. Yeah. That's awesome. Summers in Serbia sounds pretty cool. Yeah. It's like hot, sticky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not so cool. <laughs> it's so weird because Vancouver's climate is kind of like the typical uh West Coast climate where it's like I don't know like even in the summertime if you're in the shade it's kind of cold and so like I yeah. actually really because like all my memories of the summer in Serbia were so like dear to me the thought of like hot thick heat is actually exciting to me and <laughs> Toronto is like that so when I moved to Toronto I was like oh my god it's like Serbia I can smell like <laughs> hot trash on the street like <laughs> That smell was so like, ah, to me. So specific. And it's yeah. so true. Like when it's in July, it's so gross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I spent some time in New York City too. And that's, that's got a good oh. trash smell. You'd love it there. Holy trash smell. It's not, no, it's not <laughs> smell completely like hot garbage. <laughs> I actually like the feeling when you get in like a uh, really hot car in the summer that most people hate. Me too. So now I'm going to think of Serbia when I do it. Be like, this is, <laughs> this is what it feels like in Serbia. Do many of your family live in Canada as well? Um, actually, a few, uh, my dad's uh, sister and parents moved to Melbourne. Oh. But we oh. were supposed to go to Melbourne. So it was like a done deal that we were also going to try and get visas to Australia. But the Australian embassy was like not giving them out in time. And like the war is getting worse. Um, and then my parents are like getting more and more desperate, but my mom is a geologist. So she oh walked by the Canadian embassy on her way home and was like, I'm just going to apply. I don't care. Like we have to, <laughs> so then she applied and because she's a geologist, she could get like work in Canada. Um, and also, yeah. Yeah, and then we got visas and we just left. We would have uh, gone to Australia. And I've actually spent a lot of time in Melbourne because, um, my, my grandpa's still alive there and my, um, aunt. Yeah cousin lived there but yeah it was like a totally fluke that we ended up going to Vancouver that's so crazy but what a yeah. <laughs> what a good mom my grandfather who's 98 lives in Melbourne and is like wow. a member of the ex-Yugoslav club in Melbourne so <laughs> oh, that's awesome. do all yeah. your family members live a really long time I hope so like not the people who have died but like a lot of them <laughs> <my grandmother, No. laughs> they, my mom's side is also like I mean she's like late and honestly it's not old to me but she's definitely gonna still be alive and kicking for a while I can just sense that with her 
That's yeah. awesome. We have a, a financial advisor. One of our clients is like 103 and still like a hundred percent like together. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, you got to plan a lot of money, by the way, if you're going to live that long. It gets expensive. Yeah, to yeah. <laughs> you're retired. Like my grandma's retired longer than she was in the workforce as a nurse. So I'm like, wow, how wild wow. is that? That's crazy. That pension. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of work, how did you get into acting? How did I get into acting in Vancouver? Yeah, there is like a so my sister was in an acting class. It's so weird because like a couple weeks ago, a friend of mine, we were doing an Instagram live uh, with his company and we like did an interview. And then after my best friend messaged me, was like, you never talked about Peter's Avidil school of drama. And I was like, (laughs) I forgot about that part. (laughs) And then, and then I was like, I literally didn't talk about that at all, but basically my sister joined an acting class and then I wanted to join it. So the guy let me join when I was like six and we did, um, I don't know, whatever. It was just like an acting class. And it was amazing. The guy, he was so interesting and weird and like made us like memorize things that were like, honestly, kind of like uh, I Gilbert and Sullivan and like things that are just like older pieces that I don't know, I I didn't Mm -hmm. have exposure to. And then um, that was like a three year long program where you just do that, whatever on the weekends. Um, And then I was like, okay, you know, when you're a little kid, that's like boring to you eventually. And so I- (laughs) I want to do gymnastics. And so then I, (laughs) but then when I got to high school, um, I did a drama class and I was like, oh my God, this is like Peter's Avenue School of Drama. And then (laughs) someone came to our drama class at the end of grade eight and was like, uh, telling everybody about a film school for teenagers that you could go to in the summer. And I ended up going, and it was so cool. Like you basically just like made your own movies with a group, mm. with whatever the group of people were, and you had all the tools to make it. And it was on an, like one of the Gulf islands off the coast of uh, Vancouver. And it was so cool. I was like, Oh my God, I want to do this. Like, yeah, it was just really exciting. You like made your own short films as like a 13 year old and everybody. It's amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. And everybody in the program was eight. It was 13 to 18 year olds. And everybody else was like 18 going into film school at the time. So after that, they would like call me on weekends. And like, do you want to be in my short film? And I'm yeah, like, I was- <laughs> you're in a hundred short films from your teenage years. <laughs> yeah. Like I literally, there are like all these random short films and some of them they don't get finished or like whatever they're film school kids, but right. that's, that's actually how I started acting. It was really a ni- nice way to start. I got to say, I did try to find some of your shorts. Like <laughs> I was looking on your IMDb and I was like, I need to go back and just watch like from the beginning. I'm just going to start. The beginning. <laughs> no, they, they wouldn't even be like, these would not even be on there. <laughs> I just found out today that you guys did a Denzel short after season three, right? In love. Yes. So I was like desperately looking for that online before we talked to you. I didn't find it. There's a, I, I found info about it, but um, that is so cool of all of you. Yeah, that was nice. And the vibe was so, everybody was just like, Denzel, you're doing the thing, whatever you want. And he was, he was like such a star in that he really rose to the occasion. Mm. <laughs> uh, I was watching your web series Blood, um, which I think did you film that during during Handmaids? Because Maddie popped up in, in episode three. Yes, we like started doing Blood uh, right before uh, the first episode of right before the season came out, like the very first season. Um, and then oh. we did, it was just like a thing. Oh. We're, we're just gonna do one thing. Oh, we'll do another. We'll do another one. And then when we did the third one. Um, Maddie came and did it and it was really fun. It's really funny. It's good. I really like it. <laughs> now when we watch it, I'm like, ew. But like <laughs> making it was so like, it's just those things that you're passionate and excited about. So it ends up being so exciting. You don't really care if it ends up being good or bad. It's just to get to do it is fun. And mm-hmm. like to find right. exact people who are down to do that and have the same vision as you was really really exciting even though it's just like a random web series but yeah so, so now like a couple months ago Sam who did it with me was like ew I can't believe we thought this made him. like I know but like <laughs> I still think it's, it's like stupid funny and I don't know I it got me a few I was definitely laughing I was like this is like <laughs> the brand of humor is so specific mm-hmm. it felt like you and your friends just kind of had your little way of talking to each other yeah yeah. Totally. It's very like mid 2010s humor. Yeah. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> I can't wait to watch it and remember that. You'll enjoy it. 
did you study um, comedy? Like, did you do improv classes or? I did improv in high school, uh, at my high school. And there's like, when you do improv in Canada, there's like a thing called the Canadian improv games. And they're like mm -hmm. a quite established improv, um, like organization. But it's funny because I ended up not, I don't know how to explain this, but so when I was in grade 10, I felt this feeling where I was like, oh, I'm not like smart enough to be good at this. And I honestly think it was like one of those situations where you're a girl <laughs> and you're like, everybody else knows all these movies, movie references, of like Star Wars and <laughs> like usual suspects or whatever it is like these um, these like really prominent American movies I watched a lot of movies because my mom loves movies but we watched like <laughs> contemporary Iranian cinema <laughs> and so I think yeah. when I was like I did it for a couple years and then all of a sudden I was like I don't think I'm like good for this because I'm not like smart in that way and they were always like Nina's the uncultured one <laughs> wait, wait, you are more cultured yeah, but like, yeah. <laughs> I ended up not doing it anymore because I just, just a couple things that happened that were like personal things with people who were doing it that I that I kind of just felt like uncomfortable about, which now I'm like revealing this information. But like, anyways, so <laughs> not, I didn't end up doing it uh, later on in high school, but I was sad about that after because it was one of those things where you get discouraged about something because of like, honestly, gender politics and then, yeah, and then yeah. not doing it. Um, but I really liked doing it. And it was one of the things that like made me really excited about um, like acting and, and feeling like there's different ways for you to create even script writing process through improvisation. Like after that, something that was really fulfilling is we had a play at my high school where there was like a big play festival in, in North Vancouver where I grew up. And we didn't have um, like any, any money or any tools. Like I went to like a sports school. And so we literally just using improv created off of a short story that one of my friends wrote a short like play. And I, I it was so fucking cool because we ended up winning all these awards at the festival and, mm -hmm. and, and like schools that had teachers that wrote plays for them and like did rehearsals with them we did rehearsals all by ourselves it was so rewarding I was gonna say yeah totally and when you're like 16 and you can do something like that you're like oh my god I have the power to like make things on my own it was really cool yeah so that was something that was like helpful in my career that's incredible I relate very hard to what you said about the kind of like gender politics issue with that circle because when I was in high school I was in a film I actually did kind of a similar thing so it was like 20 of us and two girls and a lot of the time you felt like almost there's a pretentiousness to your knowledge of film I guess can't be like, remember when she gets period and then she, and you're, and people are like, what? It's like, you're not remembering the same things. Like yeah. I'm remembering mm -hmm. when Gracie goes up to her mom and goes, no bra, no panties in 13, you know, I'm not <laughs> remembering what like Jar Jar Bink said in the like fourth movie, you know, I, cause I didn't watch it or know it. And then it's like, you kind of just feel like, oh, I, I don't know these things, but then you don't realize that you actually know other things because you're too young to know yeah, that. Right. Yeah. See it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Jar Jar was really fucking annoying. You didn't miss. You didn't yeah. Miss yeah. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Agree. Before we get into handmade questions, I just want to ask, you seem like a karaoke fan, right? Am I getting this right? Yeah, I do like karaoke. <laughs> I would like to know your favorite karaoke songs, please. I've been honestly harping on dreams for so long. It's so sad. It's like, get a new fucking song. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I love doing like Fleetwood Mac ones because they're just so fun and like performative. Or sometimes yeah. I like doing, I don't know if, if there's, what did I do once? I was randomly like, I'm going to do a J. Cole one. Anyways, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah usually Fleet Mac would be where I lean or if other people you know karaoke people just start like putting a bunch of songs on and then someone doesn't show up for their song and it's like yeah <laughs> I would I would probably be down to jump in my <laughs> husband does the worst rendition of tears in heaven you've ever heard in your life and it's absolutely <laughs> mortifying I can't even like stand there and watch it's like this weird heavy metal version <laughs> of tears in heaven which is about a kid dying like Jesus Dave it's so embarrassing. I'll have to save it for you. Guys. This is a this is a multiple performance thing, Kate. It's happened more yes, than once. Yes, it's his karaoke <laughs> song. So any karaoke <laughs> and like everybody, he's so bad. It's really bad. Like it sounds everything about it is so bad. For my secondhand embarrassment, it is not good. It is worth applauding because I've never done karaoke in my life. Not once. No? No. Nope. I, I'm a little shy about it. A couple drinks will get me there. Yeah. But 
My problem with karaoke is like the song choice, like there'll be a book and I'll be like looking through it for like two hours. Yeah. And then I'm like, uh, I still haven't found the song. Bar is closing. <laughs> Karaoke's over. Yeah. It's, it's, everything's over. Everyone's gone home and I'm just sitting there. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nina just sang her way through all of the songs like while she was waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's the been on stage time. all night. <laughs> yes. I would enjoy watching that. Yeah. All right, two handmaids. How did you get the handmaids job? Alma's just the best. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, when I moved to Toronto, I did like a bunch of like indie horror children's movie or whatever. And then um I got an audition for handmaids. And I don't know, I just ended up like getting a callback. And at the callback, uh Reed Rano was there and mm. she was super cool. And we just like tried. Uh, doing Alma in like different ways like sassy not I, I, I don't know like a she's a tattletale type and it was whatever was really good and I wore um like a red dress and I don't know and then I got that role but so when I got that role it didn't feel like oh my god this is going to be what it ended up being mm -hmm. I thought oh this is so cool and I'm super excited um the people working on it are really cool and it's based off of a iconic Classic. book, yeah. but I didn't, I well, actually, nobody, I don't think anybody thought it was going to be so big. And I honestly didn't think my character was going to be big because I was cast, um, to be like, what was Alma? Alma was like, a maybe going to be, I thought it was like, she's going to be in this one episode or two episodes. So it mm. didn't seem like I was really excited. And I was like, oh my God, this is so funny. And I could sense this was really big and cool, but I, it wasn't like, um, oh, this is definitely such a big deal, especially yeah. with character. And at the time, cause I, cause it, it really wasn't supposed to be that she'll, she'll be in mm -hmm. as many episodes as I ended up doing in like all those seasons. Oh, that's cool. I saw that. Um, you're also a big Myra Atwood fan. Yeah. Were you super excited? when you got to meet her <laughs> well yeah but so we didn't really like we were all just like and she walked <laughs> through the set we, we, we were shooting where the, we shot the red center and she came to set to do uh she, you know how she's in the first season she has oh, a yeah. she yeah. came for her mm -hmm. cameo we made like a gauntlet for her to walk through of us just being like <laughs> and she's just like like there are too many people so even when I've spoken to her before I feel like it's like we're always in a huge group of people and she's like okay I literally don't know who you are like <laughs> we're nice but obviously like I was like and, I, and when I read Oryx and Craig and it's like <laughs> stop talking she's like trying to catch her breath. she hits Alma instead of hitting Lizzie instead of <laughs> yeah she's like shut up <laughs> But yeah, so I was excited. I was excited because it's so rare to that that level of um, I don't know, like I someone who you admire their writing and you're actually reading them in your spare time, and then that whole like kismet situation yeah. is cool. Yeah, yes. Did you know any handmade any of the um, like other actresses before you started? I guess Maddie, because you said you filmed Blood before that. No, I didn't know Maddie because we ended up filming Blood. Um, no, we filmed Blood after I had shot Handmaids, but before Handmaids had come out. So that's how oh, okay. I met her through that. But the very first day, we're like sitting in hair and makeup. I'm like, hi, hi, um, Maddie, Nina. She's like, I have your name tattooed on my finger. And it's like right here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that was her middle finger, right? I think it was her middle finger or like here. It was like, oh, she just she just like quickly showed me right away. And I was like, oh. And then she's like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait, what? And she's like, no, it was my cat's name. That was like the first thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, who is this bitch? And we like hung out that first day. Yeah. That's an amazing first impression. <laughs> yeah. It was very, she was very like cool and yeah we love that you're all friends and with bar here as well um, yeah it's so fun seeing you all hang out outside of handmade totally Bahia came over for dinner on valentine's day Aww. Aww. did you have a galentine's day yeah it is really nice to have like true connection with people because something that I noticed right away like on that show is that everybody had this like similar way of thinking about things even as you're like sitting in hair and makeup every day and everyone's around you Someone says something, you're like, oh, I just heard about that too. Mm -hmm. And that's a really nice feeling because you don't always get that on everything. And you don't get to like spend all those years and time with those people when you do, which is really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. yeah, you must have enjoyed going back for the flashback last season. Oh my, that was so iconic. I was not excited. So I remember like I, 
someone was like, are you excited? Like you're going back to Hemi's. And I was like, yeah. And I'm like in the middle of other things, just kind of like, yeah, that's going to happen uh, on Friday or Thursday or it doesn't. And then that morning I like get in the car to go and they like drop me off. And as I'm like getting out of the van, I'm like, wait, what I'm, I'm on like the third AD <laughs> meets me. And I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't think about how cool this would be. And everyone's like, yeah. oh, I'm like, and I was like, I saw everybody. I'm like, this is the same feeling I get when I see like relatives of mine where it's like, uh, I know you so well. Like, even if I yeah. haven't seen you, you're just like my family. And I don't have a choice. It's not like I'm like thinking of you like that because I'm thinking of you. It's just like, it's happened to me. And I, there's no other way for me to relate to you. <laughs> that was really nice. Honestly. I love that. You and Maddie and Bahia should do like a little a web series, like a little sitcom. The three of you got out of Gilead. Now you're like living together in an apartment. Yeah, but- That's the content we want. <laughs> but he said that me and she was like, we should like create this idea that we jumped on the train and then started doing vaudeville in different cities. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will kickstart this project. <laughs> for yeah, sure. thank you guys did not die in my mind. That is not <laughs> cool. No, so I'm with I'm with the vaudeville plan. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, ever said you guys had so much fun on set those days, and there are like pictures showing that as well. Yeah, flashback yeah. days. I bet you have some cool behind the scenes stories and shenanigans you guys got up to. Do you have any that you can share with us? <laughs> Um, honestly, we mostly just like are always just like, (laughs) you know, that feeling when you're with your friends and you feel really powerful, like we're just walking around doing our thing. Like just so much of us hanging out is us like strutting through sets or places that we're shooting, going to the food table and then just like, like taking over because we're like a gang. (laughs) (laughs) It reminded me of when, when you're like a kid and you're just like. I don't know. We're more powerful than everybody else when we're together. <laughs> and honestly, it's not like we did anything crazy or like, you know how like some people are like, we did pranks or whatever. We No, we yeah. just for hours talked about like books we were reading and things we saw and what we thought about them. And, and that was also part yeah. of that. Like, I'm with you guys. I feel like everything, we have the power to do things. And that's mm-hmm. really interesting feeling but like for example like me and Bahia have like the amount of hours I've spent within like a two foot radius of her like (laughs) literally they're talking or we're both reading a thing or we're both on our phones but we're like near each other is crazy (laughs) and it's so nice because she's so smart and she's so um well read such a joy to get to like talk to her about things so it sounds like we didn't do like you know whatever those things that other people do that are like fun stupid pranks or whatever but it was more just the joy was in like existing around them being in their presence yeah that's, yeah. A, that's sweet I get that vibe from by all your instagrams you all just seem like you'd be awesome to hang out with so I get <laughs> it thanks <laughs> is Maddie is Maddie still in London is she still doing cabaret I don't know for sure but I think she's done that show because I think that finished end of January got it yeah that would be hard. Looked awesome. Did you do theater? Have you done theater outside of high school? No, it did look awesome. No, I didn't. I haven't. I haven't done theater since I started doing film in Toronto. Mm-hmm. There's been a couple of times where I've kind of like thought like workshopped a little bit something, um, which yeah. I would be down to do, but it just, it's hard because unless it's like a specific time that you know that you won't be working mm-hmm. it ends up being mm-hmm. hard for to like not not be open to other things it's a yeah. huge commitment yeah it is totally uh but yeah maddie's been like a musical theater she went to school for musical theater so that's been her like <laughs> oh my god i really want to do this like through the years she, she has so. a great voice oh I my god she sings on the show i heard that her performance is insane yeah like amazing yeah actually one of our group went she said it was amazing i would like to see her in musical theater me too she should do it in new york to tell her that exactly <laughs> then we can all go exactly yeah. do you um do you write as well I do write yeah after I did that web series blood I did a couple of like shorts that I didn't end up making and then I did a short that Colin who shot handmaids uh-huh. ended up shooting. oh that's mm-hmm. awesome yeah it was it was really cool and since then I've written a couple more I've like worked on longer things <laughs> that are just like going through treatment phases but yeah or I'll like apply for like a grant or Right now, 
I'm doing um this short that I want to shoot in Serbia. Oh, that's awesome. In the summer, right? In the summer in Serbia. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so I applied for a grant for it last year in Serbia and I didn't end up getting it, but I got really amazing feedback from the people who were do, like part of the, com- the in, in Serbian, it's like committee. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then at the time I was like, oh, I didn't get it, whatever. Oh my God, they hate me, I'm stupid. And then um, I did ended up like working. So this is what always happens because then I'll end up like doing a job for like a couple months and then I'll like forget that I was doing that thing. And then I have to actively be like, no, go back to the script and like yeah. revise and apply again or like change it and apply in a different way. So my relationship with like writing is at this point still kind of, I focus on it when I have the time to focus on it. And then I have to like pull myself back to that because I do really, every time I've made something that I've written and then directed, it's like, it's a really, really fulfilling feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's something I'm, I'm probably going to keep doing on the side of like when I'm doing. not working or not acting, whatever. What did you do during COVID? What was your big, I feel like everybody picked up a hobby, but oh. God, I'm not going to talk about when I tried to do working on an organic farm because that was insane. <laughs> um, actually, I so I I had re- I wrote a bunch of different like shorts and then I ended up doing a like uh, treatment and uh, what is that thing called when you like have an, a show idea and you like write out what all the episodes would be, write out like, mm-hmm. like an overview of what I wanted to show the show to be. And then I would like write parts of it. Yeah, it's kind of like a treatment in the way that you like can present it. Um, so I worked on that a lot when I was, uh, during, during COVID because it was so nice. Actually, something that I liked about that time was that I felt no pressure to do anything. So it felt like everything just came in a way that was really nice. Whereas when I'm like, oh, God, you know, you got to get back to that script. I, it's so much harder for me to go back there. Mm-hmm. And at, at that time it was just like all flooding out because you're just like, sleeping and in your house and then yeah. I'm still still <laughs> yeah you're just like awake and then you're not but you're always in the same spot <laughs> like everything that you wanted to be getting from outside is like spilling out from inside which was nice that's awesome were you in LA or Toronto for the lockdown I was in Toronto oh yeah because you guys were filming right Lockdown. We were filming yeah we were filming I was also filming C- uh this show C at the time was also like filming during pandemic and then uh when we went back in September handmaids went back in September and C went back in like November so it was nice to like go back to work like so soon because I was like I feel like handmaids was one of the earliest like shows that went back I mean I know it was hard too you guys had to quarantine for like two weeks that year right something crazy yeah and we only hung out with like each other each other so that and then that's when McKenna came I saw that McKenna was uh she's amazing yeah, yeah she's she's the best her and her mom and then like they're like me and my mom and then <laughs> Uh, Joe and Lola, who Joe is Colin's wife uh-huh. and Lola is their sister, would like go on hikes together, like during that time. Cause Aww. my mom was staying with me. We were all getting tested. And so it was like, nice to have a group of people you could hang with. Yeah. Hang out with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. this was most of season four right that was like put on hold yeah right? yeah and then I think we even had to reshoot certain things because of the change of like I think the director was supposed to the Australian director Dana was supposed to do it and then she couldn't leave Australia mm-hmm. yeah I think Colin ended up doing it uh and like directing that episode so then we had to like reshoot certain things but yeah, it was the fourth season. I actually really loved, I loved the setting and the barn and the keys farm. Yeah. It was nice to see you guys out of, you know, in a new place. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, you yeah. said the word organic farm and I'm like, oh, you guys were like on a farm during. <laughs> she really loved it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> inspirational. <laughs> wait, wait, who, who was it inspirational to? Me? Yeah, you said something about an organic farm. Okay. And I was like, I don't know if she's joking or not, but if she's not, maybe she got inspired by, by season four. No, so I, during COVID, I had always had this dream of doing um, like, you know, those like work on a farm programs where you like go live yeah. on a farm and work for them. And I was like, I'm finally going to do woofing. Like I've been wanting to do this since I was like 18. Um, mm-hmm. And then I, I went to this really insane farm and I didn't realize how like dangerous it is when you're just like in the middle of nowhere with like random and like people who if they're not normal 
uh -huh. and the animation is not normal, you're like, oh, I'm stuck here. Like I'm literally uh -huh. in the middle of nowhere. And it was a really bad experience. Like, like it was just like, this is so weird. Like there was another younger girl there who was on their farm. And I, I ended up calling my best friend and being like, just come pick me up. I hate it here. Get like, me out of here. <laughs> and my friend like drives in like an hour later and was like, uh, just like got me in the car. And then I looked at like the younger girl. I'm like, are you staying here? Cause like, I feel bad leaving. Yeah. And then she was like, okay. um, but it's interesting because then like a year, like a couple years later, I was like literally thinking about that experience and how I like blocked it from my memory. Cause the people were just weird. Like the people who owned the farm were it sounds, so, yeah. just so weird. Not normal. Yeah. It's like Dwight Schrute. I don't know what, what's that? Dwight Schrute. He's in the office. He's a, oh. what is it? A beet farmer or something? Anyway. Yeah. Very yeah. weird people. <laughs> yeah. They were weird. Honestly, won't even get into, it was just like dark. It was weird. And, uh, <laughs> So weird because I, I forgot about it. I literally bought it from my memory. And then I was shooting this movie in Hamilton last year. And I walked by somewhere that reminded me of that farm. And I'm like, I wonder what happened to that girl. And like two days later, she messaged me being like, Hey, I just want to let you know, um, that summer working with them was really weird for me. And it's left me with some like difficult memory bubble. And I was like, Oh my God. Like, I was just thinking, no way. Like, I'm fine. She's, she's fine. Yeah, but like, but still. Just, like, but it popped up right then. Totally. And she was really, I think she was like 18 and now she's like 20, 21, 22. So maybe she's now older and realizing, oh God, I shouldn't have stayed that whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. So that's pretty fucked up. Maybe you should write a horror movie. That sounds like the basis <laughs> of a horror it movie. Was, yeah, it was totally if you had stayed. Yeah. I actually did that on a game reserve. I paid like a lot of money to work on a game reserve. And they're like, all right, go in and clean the cheetah cage while they're in there like it was crazy it was crazy but what? they were cool people though the cheetah cage wallet in there yeah they're just like just go uh, while they're in there and they just laid there oh my god i know it was wild the things that happen in other countries but then i got really mad because like the moment i left they had cheetah cubs like babies and then they raised them in the house and i that's can't odd. like i'm still yeah. traumatized oh that is so that's like all you did in oh. the world, like I would live happily forever if I had just lived with cheetah. <laughs> oh, it's just not fair. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Now we collect cats. No, I do have too many cats now. It's oh, you do? Huh? No, I'm not even a cat person. But, well, Kimberly's dogs, but yeah. <laughs> Violet has six cats. She's like a official cat lady. Cat lady. It became really eccentric. Like after three, it was like, now it's like a different sort of situation. Like three cats is like, you can tell people like, and you don't have to explain yourself. You're just like, I have three cats. <laughs> Once you get like four, five, six cats, it's like, there's, you got to tell the whole story. Cause it's like, I'm not crazy. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crazy. People are like, <laughs> yeah, things happen out of my control. <laughs> You'd have to like clean the litter box like twice a day. That's crazy. That's yeah. That's a lot. Changes your whole life basically at that point. So what? situation i mean my well we had like family members that couldn't take care of their cats anymore so that we have them now is the short story but there yeah. a lot of family members that couldn't take care of their cats <laughs> it was yeah we, my mom had a stray cat that had kittens and then ah, yeah, oh. so. uh, kittens kittens that explains one that. litter will do it one litter yeah, will do it. Yeah. Mm. We have people listening in the upside down. I think Kate told you about that. Didn't yeah, that's they're right. not from the farm, Nina. He it's takes fine. back everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our other podcast members. Four other podcast members. Yeah. I'll ask you one more question before we cross over to the farm people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like Anastasia, is that you? Surprise, <laughs> guys. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to know what your favorite scene to film during your whole entire time of The Handmaid's Tale? That's an easy question. Okay, I need, I need 10 seconds to think of that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jeopardy music. <laughs> but I'm like, there's so many like, okay. I'm thinking of the most, in, the hardest scene first. Um, and then, but I'm not, I, I won't say well, I don't want part of the question. Uh, <laughs> We'd like to hear all of that. Okay, uh, th maybe this is just because it's recent memory, but I honestly do think the farm was like after you go through all this, like after so many like difficult years of doing difficult scenes, Ooh. fighting and torture, giving birth and they, yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, the farm really was like a ah, we're yeah. just rounding around. At this point, you know everyone so well, you don't have to like be like, you know, you can just literally be like. 
And, <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I really liked the scene where we're dancing. That was so fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, just so beautiful. And Colin was, I think, directing it. Um, yeah, he was. And also like, I went, I went to his house with his family the night before, like a couple nights before we started shooting that whole episode. And we got to like, really get into what his thoughts were for those scenes. And that mm-hmm. was really nice to have the time. Cause I feel like in TV, you don't always have time to talk about things. You're really just trying to move fast. Um, and yeah. so like, you like know people and you can meet up with them before and be like, this is what I was thinking. Oh, well, I thought this people, but if we tried this, so I liked it for those two reasons, being able to collab on it uh, and have time outside of shooting. And then like just the setting, uh, the setting, the timing of, of doing it after a couple of years of everything. And then also mm-hmm. just everybody being there was like what made it good. It was that scene for sure. It was refreshing to see you guys, like you said, the dancing scene, you know, before, mm-hmm. before what comes next, it was nice to see actual nice time had. Yeah. I had a question about how so I don't know how much backstory they they kind of went into with Alma as far as her connections, because it seems like she always knows everything that's going on. Like she has all the gossip about like what Gilead is doing. She has all the Mayday gossip. Mm-hmm. Like, did you have something in your head kind of for how she's getting that information? Or did they tell you since it's not fully explained? I was just curious. So yeah, that was okay. The way that um, Alma's character developed throughout the years was very like organic to what we ended up doing on the show. Like, for example, the first episode, even the whole like Alma being like, hi, and like smiling was like, Mm -hmm. so random. Why is she happy here? But in my mind, I thought to myself like, well, you know, this is like normal for her. And also you get to a place and what's your first instinct is like, oh my God, did you, hear me? Da, 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 da. you know, it's like you act normal because mm. that's what you know how to do in this weird mm-hmm. situation. Yeah, you're there. So that was part of like me making a choice. And then after like Bruce being like, hey, I, I thought that was cool. Or like, you know, or me working off of what Lizzie is giving me. And then that ended up happening, like very just like based off of how I'm responding to my situation and the character. And then how they end up like taking that response and being like, oh, she does this a lot. Why don't we put this into the scene? Um, so it really, like a lot of it was, was that type of thing, like just us Mm -hmm. building her when it started, because again, there was there, there wasn't very much backstory to her, but what I always thought in terms of why she was able to know so much information is because she's like friendly, she's smiling. She's, she stayed relatively, uh, stable throughout this whole thing. And I honestly like more than anyone. yeah, Yeah. And I think that like, uh, the whole like gossipy getting, getting things done through talking, gossiping and knowing about everybody is a really amazing distraction to like being in that situation. And I don't even necessarily like, it's like, yeah, she ends up doing it to, uh, escape or be a part of the resistance. That's like the most important reason. But I think it's also just like, this is her thing that she can do. Right. Life is boring there. Exactly. Especially when it comes to like how she's kind of like brash or, or whatever that is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, bring the dummy or was that in the, in the scripts? They, no, that was in the script actually. They, I love it. Yeah. I love it. But you did it so well, they kept writing it in. And now I keep <laughs> saying it to my friends. <laughs> because it's just perfect yeah I love it. affectionate dummy i mean i feel like if i was in that if i was there alma would be the one i'd want to talk to so that kind of makes sense because you seem like yeah june's a little heavy i would also go, go towards alma that would be my... <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah almost like easy she's there she'll chat yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as backstory like do you have any thoughts on her her past since we never got to learn much. I think what she had a son somewhere that didn't make it on Angel's Flight. We learned that she had a son, which I didn't even really know. Really young. Until I, I know. Yeah. So the son thing coming in was totally a wrench for me because I was like, that's not how I thought of Elma. And then I started I <laughs> writing her past for myself. Right. Um but yeah, her backstory, I don't know. I feel like I always saw her as like getting a degree in something. Um, and then she, you know, while this is all happening. Well, that's why the sun thing kind of, cause I was like, she's in university. She's, she's <laughs> like, I always thought not work. Yeah. She's <laughs> English literature. Right. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, well, you know, maybe she ended up like accidentally in like her second year of university getting knocked up and she like has this kid. And because she's so fast and quick, she ends up like, she gets a job, uh, finishes her degree while raising her son, you know? And I, and I don't it's think that in my mind, I didn't think that 
she stayed with the dad because it's like yeah. she's young. Was he like the professor? Was he her professor? Was that about? Oh. I, honestly, I was a, like the hot uh, master's student that's visiting from abroad or something. Yeah. <laughs> like that, yeah. Alma needs to be intellectual for some reason. But yeah, that's how I always thought of her as just kind of like, even though, I, I don't know, like living this like going to university lifestyle just like seemed to fit for her well also like mm-hmm. when you're in those situations too like college situations it makes sense that she'd be super like okay so I was talking to the and like maybe she like runs the school paper because she knows about all this shit you know mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh my that God. was always so, like my my backstory to Alma was always um this like clouded thing that I I never made concrete because I'm like I really really liked from the very beginning how much showing up open allowed for more exciting things to happen uh, and not yeah. being like that she doesn't do that because I'm like <laughs> well there is no limit to what people do and how right. and how they act and why they act the way they act so it's mm-hmm. like like having a not concrete idea like kind of being like I swear she was like studying English literature somewhere and then she ends up like getting knocked off and then she ends up just like having the kid continuing that you know and but I'm like I don't, I never wanted to be like, this is what she, exactly she did because yeah, many things started to come at me that were um, new every time I would do a new season or like even a new episode that I'm like, I just want to be able to be like completely open to take that in and put it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Okay. I'm going to bring over Marigold. Hi, Nina. I'm Marigold. Hello. First off, before I ask my question, um, I just want to say that I loved your short um, Tunnel Beach. Thank you. Yeah, I really liked how it was shot. So well done on that. Thank you. Yeah. And so my question is kind of lighthearted. And now knowing that you're a karaoke fan, what would you say would be Alma, (laughs) Brianna, Janine, and June's like karaoke song to sing together? Oh my God. That's so hard. Get the book out. Get the book out. I feel like you guys must have sung a song. Hey, I don't know why living on a park <laughs> instantly took over my whole brain. Yeah, that's a good one. Like, Wait, what was it? I didn't hear it. Living on a prayer. Is that what you said? Living on a prayer just washed <laughs> over my whole brain. And I didn't even want it to, but it did. So I'm going to say that. Well, that's your gut reaction. So yeah. that must be it. Yeah. We would like to see that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is Raquel. Uh, it's Strabo Nina. Ah, oh, Strabo. <laughs> I don't know anymore. So sorry. <laughs> That's nice. I did try to learn uh, to say something else, but I didn't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us and taking the time to spend some time with us. My question was, if you could go back to the show, do one more scene. Mm-hmm. and you kind of forget that you've been run over by a train didn't happen uh, and you could do anything uh what would that be and if you could work with a cl- customer that you've not worked with who would that be oh okay it would have been really cool to see the Canadian like who made it to Canada like Luke's character like I I, I feel like I'm thinking of all the actors I would want to see I'm like I would want to work with Samira I would want to see uh mm-hmm. Bradley in a scene but it would be cool for uh the Gilead girls like group to uh have some kind of like dinner party with the people who made it yeah. that would be <laughs> what I mean yeah, yeah. I would love and that. then sort of like in the corner like not uh, there but not I feel like that, that would be really cool like a, a dinner a dinner in Canada with all of us like all of you escaped and all of us escaped. having a little reunion yeah we're meeting up with the people who made it to Canada and who have like established themselves and we're kind of like put in a space together Pita and Mamora know each other uh, yeah they do from the yeah. from the first but the it's, red, center. red center from the red center but they haven't seen each other in super long and even just bringing those two worlds together that would be the scene I would want to do lovely it's so interesting like we were talking with Stephen Kunkin and like how many people on the show would never work together you know like you're all on this huge show but he never works with OT right it's so interesting yeah and you end up sometimes like you then you see them and you're like oh oh (laughs) you know no anyway they're like whatever (laughs) (laughs) award shows are apparently very fun Mm -hmm. okay Rachel hi Nina Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> I just wanted to say how much I love Alma. I miss her so much. 
But I'm, my question is, I'm um, asking a question on behalf of another panelist of ours who wasn't able to be here today, Scarlett. Mm -hmm. So she was very curious if you're aware of any um, cut scenes for Alma that were, or any scenes for Alma that may have been cut, um, either filmed or not, that you're able to talk about. Okay. No, I, I don't think there were any that I knew of because there were none that I shot and that didn't end up uh, being in it. I'm trying to think. No, no, not that I would have been aware of for sure. So we got everything of yours that was intended. That's <laughs> awesome. Like there's someone behind the scenes somewhere. No, um, <laughs> yeah. So everything that I had shot actually, okay. So there was once when I couldn't do an episode cause I was shooting something in LA and I think they ended up cutting that. They cut that out. And that would have been shot and maybe in would have been in the film. If Alma's not in it, it's not worth it. <laughs> <Ouch>. <laughs> so that was something I, I it wasn't an like an important Alma scene. I think it was more just like, there she is <laughs> saying something. And then yeah. so it ended up not being in it. That was the one time that I know of, um, because like whatever was scheduled thing. Yeah. Do you know what the scene was? It was uh in the supermarket. It was a supermarket scene. <laughs> It was okay. a supermarket scene where she says something and it's an Alma scene. An Alma scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you like... totally picture it. You described it well. <laughs> it's the classic. We all know. It. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll continue to hope for more flashbacks where they can bring Alma back and yeah. you guys can have your reunions again. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Your guys is Alma love. It's very, really like a nice feeling. Yes. My husband really loves Alma. It's sad that he had to go to a basketball game for my kid because he would be popping in here to grab something. I know. <laughs> this girl yesterday, I was at a plant store um, with my friend, and then this girl was like, "Oh my god, like uh, I love Alma," and I started watching the show because of my brother. Can we just quickly call him? <laughs> and then she like. <laughs> that's bold that's a bold ask I know I mean it was kind of the nice it was you know we were having a nice time in the flower store it didn't but I was dying she's like facetiming her brother and he's like just waking up she's like he doesn't normally wake up this late um he was working really like anyways this is my brother and I'm like ah! <laughs> that's funny it must have been an amazing way to wake up for him yeah um Melissa hey hi Nina nice to meet you very nice um I want to know do you have any happy moments that you always remember from your days shooting the Hamlet sale like that one moment that you always say like, oh yeah that you think always to your mind yeah okay um so when everybody started like talking about the me too movement or moment mm -hmm. it really that was a time that was very sad and dark and like it really brought up things from like other people's lives that I knew my life, like just like darkness that was like hard to watch and, and read about. And like, we went, I don't know when we, what we were shooting then, but we were shooting and like, we went to set and we all just started talking, being like, so did you like hear? And like, yeah, well, that makes sense. Cause something like that happened in this moment in my life or my friend's life. And um, we were just talking so openly about it in a way that didn't feel like we had to be like right or wrong, but where we could just process uh, what we were reading about and how that affected us or things that had happened to us or ways in which that could change. And that was like such a nice day. Like it was so, it was like what the show is about in real life happening behind the scenes of the show. And that was like a amazing amazing moment and day I don't even know if it was one day or like over the course of a week or two I don't remember the specifics of time but I remember like how how we talked and like that was really special thank you for sharing that yeah I'm really glad that we had that it's amazing the timing of the show and the world you know I mean couldn't have been at a better time for all of this yeah. or a worse time depending mm -hmm. on how you view it yeah yeah um, when did you learn Alma's fate? Did they like call you and tell you, or do you just read it in the script, which would be horrifying? No, I found out my agent heard through one of the casting directors in Canada. And I was like, what? And I was kind of like, but in what way? Uh, and then, and oh then, then I was like, 
really sad about it. But then I went to my fitting and I saw Lizzie and Lizzie was like, Oh my God, you don't even know what I'm planning. Like, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be such a like, but, and then she got me excited. And then I was like, I was kind of like, okay, this is kind of like, cool. (laughs) (laughs) I started to be like, okay, this is cool. Especially because the way that they like positioned Alma before uh, it, it was just kind of like, it ended up being an exciting way of leaving the show as opposed to like a sad thing that I was leaving. I was still really sad about it, but I felt like right. I was being paid tribute to or like uh, respected in that leave that felt more positive than negative. Yeah. At first I was like, when it was kind of like a through the grapevine here, I was like, hmm. and then when it, when I was like, got to hear about how and why and what it made me feel like taken care of in that way right yeah that's nice it's nice that lizzie got to was she directing that yeah she she, yes yeah. yeah that's really nice then you yeah. shouldn't have gone back for june you should have just gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> my god going back for her. it was so <laughs> nice to see you in um you know more screen time especially i mean before you parked it guys yeah, yeah. Everything leading up to her death was like really nice. So mm-hmm. yeah. at least there's that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Are you a fan of the show as a viewer as well? I am. Uh, also, but it's like when you've been on something for so long, it all all becomes like the same like rigmarole that you know so well. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. not as exciting as watching a show that you don't know because you can't, yeah. you don't fangirl it in the same way. But as far as like a show that I would be on and know really well, like the fact that it's this show is incredible because it's such a good show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's like bird right outside. My <laughs> I actually heard it right when you said that. <laughs> um, I do fan it on it's like my sister will be like, let's watch together. And then we'll like watch the thing. Then, um, <laughs> I, even if I know something's going to happen, I get excited. Um, but yeah, so I, I am a fan of the show. Um, I end up like with shows. I don't know how much I end up like getting invested. Um, after like so many seasons but because it's like close to me I'm like oh my god blah, blah, blah. yeah so I, I do <laughs> what shows do you watch what shows do you like so of the past couple of years shows that I've really really liked have been White Lotus uh Succession yeah. uh Chernobyl I really liked um oh that was great yeah, yeah so, that's so good it's amazing uh what other tv show was I watching that I oh my god well these are okay so those are like the ones that I'm like oh my god these are like in insane um never have I ever it's like I love that show I love so I really like Mindy Kaling world yeah. but like I I'm such a stan I I love so many of the things she makes and like never have I ever something that I'm just like oh, there's a new episode coming out I'm so excited <laughs> did she also make um is it sex lives of college girls I watched that too also liked that yeah, I haven't watched that yet, but it's on my list. Totally. Like, it's just, I, I like watching things that she makes because, I don't know, it's just entertaining to me in a way that I really, ever since, like, even the Mindy Project came out, I was like, this is the type of, like, TV that people binge watch that I could binge watch because I never could identify with, like, there are certain shows that everyone's like, oh, I just watch this all the time. And I'm more of a movies person. So I was always like, yeah, I'm sure. But, like, I could be watching movies. So I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> or, like, reading a book or whatever. Um, but those shows always get me, but yeah, I think of like the past couple of years, it would definitely be like both of the seasons of white Lotus. Um, I'm trying to think of another, I'm always a really big fan of, um, mini series like that, Mm -hmm. that just like coming together by the end of that. And then they're over. Those are always shows really, really liking, but those three of the past, like three or four years were ones that, um, that I really, really liked, like, so top quality for me. And do you have a a favorite movie from? last year oh uh from last year um what came out last year I'm kind of trying to put together my top 10 and stuff from the year and I'm like yeah I can't steal them from Nina I know. yeah <laughs> you're cheating okay so actually this just came to my head there was a movie uh that came out last year called EO um it's a ch- Jack movie oh my god where let me quickly look it up uh it's about this donkey and I, like, I feel like I'm sounding really pretentious when I say it and it's a not donkey well, it's we love donkey, donkey. So. we love donkey googling right now so. Okay, so it is a 2020 yeah it is a 2022 movie and I saw it in November at a it's Polish I saw it at the Polish film festival in Toronto uh where is this guy from Jersey Solomowski yeah Polish okay so it was Polish um, and it was just like it's a really interesting movie. It, it follows this donkey going through like a journey in like two weeks. And 
I don't know what about it was so good, but it's like people and the encount, the people and the places it encounters and like the way it's like animalness confronts humanness. Um, yeah. and then like what ends up happening in those situations. And I don't, I don't know if it was like my favorite movie, but I remember it was a movie that I watched last year that I'm like, I've never seen anything like this. And I really liked it. And uh, who's in it? Uh, someone random, like an amazing French actor. Where is she? Uh, she's in L. Isabel Fair is randomly in it. Um, I'm definitely going to watch it. Totally. It's hard for me to think, you know, when someone asks you like, what's your favorite song or what's your, it's hard to, yeah, it's impossible. Oh, I, always, I literally think of nothing when someone asks me that. I'm like, uh, me too. Oh, it's memorable. <laughs> That's probably a better question. What was memorable for you yeah. from last year? That's a better way to phrase it. Yeah. Because the way I end up coming up with the answer is I'm like, go blank. And then I'm like, <laughs> what comes first? And that's like, EO, EO did come first. That was something I, I've never seen anything like that. So yeah. Okay. Donkeys are having like a major resurgence right now. Like donkeys are just everywhere right now. Really? Yeah. Have you seen um, Banshees? Banshees. Of... Oh, yeah. I, it's a, I need to watch it before the Oscars. I It's on my, it's on my list. Donkey. And I think feel like the one that you just said about is one that I heard about with the donkey so I'm gonna have to watch that yeah I feel like there's another donkey one as well I'm gonna have to look we're building a donkey plated marathon <laughs> yeah we're building a do- uh, film library that focuses on donkeys yeah yeah <laughs> I could totally watch all of this. <laughs> we had a lot of like weeds out in our little foresty section and I looked into getting a donkey. Um, <gasps> it did not pan out, but it is legal in my like township. I went that far into it. It's like, uh, can oh, I, I have a donkey? donkey? <laughs> is that a thing that's an option? Can I get a donkey? Uh, instead, I just like mowed over <laughs> it. So I was really sad ending that story. Okay. You just got a lawnmower instead. <laughs> <laughs> Are you um are you working right now, Nina, or are you having a little break? No, I'm having a little break. Um, but there's a movie that I did that's coming out soon that I'm really excited to see and like promote. Tell us about it. I did a movie called Zoe's Having a Baby, where oh, I saw oh, we saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I am so excited for that movie. And I had the best time filming that um <laughs> last summer. And it's basically like it's literally like a 2003 rom com. And <laughs> it totally looks like it by the cover. <laughs> it does yeah, literally, it. and it, it's this girl. She uh, just turned thirty. She has endometriosis, so she is not yeah. sure that she can like um, have kids. Have a baby. She decides to just like get a sperm donor and uh, have the baby herself. And then once she uh, gets the like insemination of the sperm donor, like two uh, eligible bachelors come into her li- life and like all <laughs> the things that happen from that and like coincidences and, and ends up happening. Oh my God, it was such a delight. And I'm like so excited for it to come out. I'm like constantly, I'm always like to the producer, I'm like, so what is the network? Cause they, they still have to sell it. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. I don't know like where it's going to be, but that's like one of the things I'm like, yeah this year and like the other thing that I'm really excited to come out this year is like a completely opposite thing it's like a cool indie uh drama from like a Greek filmmaker that I'm in and I'm like okay these two things are like the most dichotomy and, <laughs> and other things that I worked on they were cool but those are the two things that I'm like oh my god those are coming out this year that I'm excited for and they're like couldn't be the more more opposite like genre can you just like message the director and be like can these be available in australia because like i'm gonna need to she, watch. she never gets to see anything it seems wait it nothing comes out there in some the- of the things like mckenna's last show yeah when we yeah we're talking to mckenna and i couldn't find um i think it was a friend of the family that she was in in australia and i can't watch uh. that anywhere here anywhere nowhere weird yeah you like you're like McKenna do you think you could just like send me a screener literally (laughs) I literally said can you message McKenna was googling it for her (laughs) McKenna finds an illegal link for you to download exactly (laughs) (laughs) she was amazing because she was still like 16 you know like the the performance that she gives is insane and so mature and then you talk to her and she's just like a delightful somehow she's kept you know so sweet she's really good at your goodness her childlike curiosity and she's like a very very talented artist in many ways like right both as a musician she's she was constantly doodling drawing she was really one of those like special savant kids who are like oh my god you you got something going on that's really special yeah. and also just a complete sweetheart and yeah she's a really really cool person 
I love Sharon. It's like those kids you hate. You're like, why are you good at everything? Like, seriously. No, you can't hate her, though. She's too sweet. She's too nice. (laughs) I mean, she says things like Miss Lizzie and holy heck. And it's just the cutest thing ever. (laughs) Yeah, she's so, like, she has her, like, uh, little, like, things. And you're like, weirdo, weirdo. weirdo." (laughs) (laughs) She's so charming. She's she's a very, very interesting, charming person. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. She's a sweetheart. Her and her mom, we had a I had a really good time like hanging out with them. They're they're really sweet. I love that oh. the moms came and we're all hanging out. It's like your mom, my mom. Your mom. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for this. This is amazing. I'm sorry we woke you up after yeah, an yeah. awesome party. It's good that I'm up. Now I can start my Sunday and like I'm impressed with how you are when you wake up because that is not how yeah. I am when I wake up. <laughs> my son wakes up pretty happy. I don't know who you got it from, but like. No, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was so nice talking to you, all of you. And like, I don't know, it's just a nice, like, I feel like just by the way, the questions that you ask and how you're asking them, it's like so obvious to me that you guys um, really appreciate, I don't know, both Alma and also the show. And it's a nice feeling to get, because I feel like you do these things and especially when it's not live theater, you don't get instant feedback from the people who you're making it for. And mm-hmm. so- the feeling of people standing Alma and liking her for this reason or another reason that like came from something that I thought of is such a cool feeling, such a fulfilling feeling. Mm-hmm. And it's really nice to like, I don't know, come face to face. Well, thank you for bringing her to life. We appreciate you very much. And thank you for spending so much time with us as well. Yeah, of course. I mean, listen, it's Sunday. I, I think I'm going to an estate sale with my friends later. So that's my only that's oh, fine. I'm going to see the live action uh, Oscar shorts uh, this afternoon. So I'm excited. Oh, oh that's a fun day. Yeah. I was supposed to be in LA this weekend and now I regret not going. It's cold here and I made a bad decision. Yeah, as you can time. see, there's birds chirping and it's I know. <laughs> it's like too much. <laughs> You're like, you know, it's like creepily perfect. Perfect. literally <laughs> <laughs> all <laughs> right we will let you go thank you so, thank you so much. much yeah Enjoy have an awesome day. day all right Bye. see you Bye. Bye.